This is an illegal outlet and there are three ways to fix it, but looks are deceiving. So that green light says it's wired correctly, but that's not the case. So as you can see, the power is now turned off with the breaker and it is safe to remove our receptacle. Problem number one, I can't pull this out very far. This is way too tight. I need more access. So this is problem number one and it has three solutions. So for safety reasons, you're going to remove the black wire and this screw terminal first, and then you're going to remove the silver screw that is holding your white wire. The last one you want to remove is your ground wire, and that is a safety measure to keep you safe. All right, let's measure our wires now and see what we're dealing with. So from the drywall, the projection, it's sticking out only about two inches. This is bad, it's way too short. By code, these wires need to extend from the box and the drywall here, at least three inches away from the drywall. We need to fix this right now. So to safely prep our wires, as you can see here, there's a lot of nicks and cuts to my wires and that's not good. So I'm just gonna take my linesman pliers and I'm gonna put that over top of my wires. I'm just gonna cut it back ever so slightly and get rid of the damaged part of the wires. What we're looking for is you want each and every electrical wire to be nice and smooth. So I'm just gonna trim these back to fix them. And same with my ground here. Just trim that back lightly and straighten out your wires so that we can make some nice safe connections. But first, you always wanna do this. Let's start off with method number one, which is check for slack. If you have this, consider yourself lucky. Now before going any further, you definitely want to pull on your wires to see if you have any extra slack here in behind your drywall and remove the screw that's holding these wires in your electrical box. Because sometimes you're able to pull out some electrical wire like this that's in behind your drywall this is 14 gauge wire. I don't have any in behind my drywall to pull out, so I'm gonna do the next best thing, which is create some pigtails. Let's do it. Here's how to make a pigtail. You're gonna take your wire cutters. I have 14 gauge wire, so I'm gonna put it in the 14, like so, and press down. Now, you do not want to yard on that or twist. It's a simple pull away. See that? The sheathing shot off five feet down the road. There we go, that's what you want. Now what you don't want to do, sometimes people do this, they go like this. Don't do that, that's not good. We're just gonna do a simple cut and pull it away, okay? That is how you make a pigtail. And that takes us to method number two, which is the WAGO 221 lever connector. Now by far the most common way to connect your pigtails is to use your WAGO 221 lever connectors. Now I use these in all of my videos. How you use them, is you open the lever like this and it's gonna open the port. You're gonna take your wire and insert it. Now there is a trick to using these. You're gonna close the lever and take a look right here at the top of the lever connector. You're gonna see that the housing is clear and that is so you can visually confirm that your wire has gone all the way to the top so that you have made a safe connection on your pigtail. That's what you're looking for. And then you just wanna give it a pull. Now for each one of these wires, your pigtails, you wanna insert it, close it, and then you wanna do the same with your ground wire, insert it all the way until you meet resistance. The key with levers is that resistance there, all the way to the top, each time you leave it. That is how you do it. Now on the side of your wagos, you'll see a wire gauge. That's gonna tell you how long your wires have to be cut. There we go, looks good. So to install my lever connectors, I like to start with my ground wire here at the bottom. And then on the left-hand side here, I have my neutral wire. And to make a connection, I'm just gonna open the port of the lever. And I'm actually just gonna twist that around my finger to make a little bit of a loop. And then I'm gonna take that open port and slide it over my wire. You wanna push this in all the way and then close the lever. And this here is the neutral. I'm gonna give this a nice, firm pull. It's really important to test your wire that it's inserted correctly. Give that a firm pull. Now it's also critical here. I'm going to do my black wire, which is the power. This has the power. I'm going to insert that. So not only do you want to make sure that it's pushed in all the way, that the lever is closed, pull that firmly. You also want to make sure that each and every lever is fully closed. 
on all of these wires and that there are good safe connections. Now this is a really good way to make safe electrical connections using pigtails, but because the direction of the wire has changed, it's created these little loops. So this is not my favorite way of doing it because these loops occupy a little bit more volume and space within your electrical box. Let's try something better, my favorite method. Method number three is the WAGO inline splicing connector. So to fix these wires, we are going to use the WAGO 221 lever connector. Now it's really important to note the white part here on the front of the lever. That's critical. We'll get to that in a second. We're going to start off with our ground wire and I've inserted the inline splice onto it. I've left the lever door open and I'm going to push that in all the way until it meets resistance. And then I'm gonna close the lever. It's met resistance because the wire has just engaged. It's just hit a bar that's gonna stop the wire from going any further. And that is gonna indicate a good connection after pulling nice and firmly on that wire. Next is our white or neutral wire. I'm gonna push that in all the way until it meets resistance firmly. Again, push it in all the way. I like to actually use two hands, right, to get it firm. Close the lever door, and that is nice and solid. Good connections. Now, why I said the white part here, WAGO also makes a lever connector, an inline splice where this is clear, and it's only good for 14 gauge wire, not 12. So anytime you are using a connector for the first time, check on the side. It's gonna say the amperage. This is good for 20 amps. That's good. And also the gauge of the wire. This is good for 12 gauge wire and 14 all the way to 18 gauge wire, stranded and solid. Never guess on that. You always want a visual confirmation. Now, can you see the difference here between the inline connector and the WAGO lever connectors? These occupy a lot less space. I like how the directionality stays the same with the wire. It doesn't loop back. It's a good, nice, clean installation. And now we're gonna take our tape and you can see that that is extending a good distance away from the drywall. Looking good. And now we can install our receptacle, but instead of installing one of these original kinds with the screw terminals, I am gonna be installing a new one. This one has lever doors, color-coded, and it's a lot safer and easier for homeowners to install. So to install it, you're gonna start here with this port at the back, and it's color-coded with the green lever door, and that is for our ground, and the terminal is enclosed. It's hidden inside the housing of the electrical receptacle. You're gonna insert that all the way. Now, it's important that you push this wire all the way again until you meet resistance. That's key with any lever device that you use. And we're gonna close the lever, and you hear it has a nice, loud, audible click. That is what you're looking for on each connection. Next, we're gonna move over here to the white wire, which is our neutral. And I'm gonna push that in all the way and then close the neutral door. And that is a good secure audible connection. So what you're looking for here is you wanna have all the insulation or the sheathing, this white part and the black part here, it needs to be fully covered. You don't wanna see any exposed copper wire out of the backside here. And I'm getting a lot of questions about this receptacle. Next up is the black wire hot wire. This carries the power. This is manufactured by the leading electrical receptacle manufacturer in the United States. They make these that we've been installing in our homes for decades. This is their latest receptacle and a lot of people really like it. The black wire is getting pushed in all the way. And this is a patent pending design. They want to own the rights to this tech because of course homeowners like lever connectors. It simplifies and makes the process of electrical easier for everybody. So you're gonna pull it nice and secure, nice and solid. You've engaged the wire all the way. Now I'm gonna push the wires into the electrical box safely. I have a lot of room in there. And then I'm just creating a little bit of an S with the wire. And then I'm gonna push that into the wall. And you're gonna notice that the tabs at the top and bottom have been cut because I'm gonna be installing 
a beautiful screwless wall plate. But this is what I'm gonna be installing today. It is a screwless cover, so I needed to remove the tabs. And if you haven't done those before, those are simply, you remove the tabs at the top here, the top of your receptacle. And we're gonna push this in all the way, get my screws on there and test it out with the face plate. Here is a screwless wall plate. I like these a lot. These are gonna be hidden. That little opening goes at the bottom, right? Because that's how you release it and push it in. And that, my friends, is a thing of beauty. Let's test our work. And always check your work. Green light means we're good. It is wired correctly. Now, if you'd like to build your skills even more in electrical, there are some good tips in this one. Lots of good project ideas as well in our playlist. I'll see you in the next one, everyone.